let's see how this stuff goes on. I'm really good at getting paint everywhere. Yeah, it goes on actually pretty good. It seems to fill the holes in the uh, or the holes in the blocks really well. I know when I painted inside the other part of the shop there, it took just an ungodly amount of paint to to cover the surface. This stuff says to give two coats. I need to sweep that up and get it all the way down to the ground, I guess. Oh, I'm gonna get this all over me, I just know it. So this should all be below grade. You could get this in a couple different colors. I think brown was available. You know, maybe it'll even tempt this stuff to about any color you want. This will just be a water trough if I don't seal it, and I, I don't think it's a bad idea anyway. Probably about as good as it is bad, maybe. It's a little trick that I figured out in order to keep things dry around here, is to only put this tarp up, the big one, halfway. I think it confuses Mother Nature and uh, she don't know whether to rain or not. I'm trying to put this stuff on relatively heavy. I'll come back and do next to the ground uh, on the second coat. I mean, it's not going to be 100% sealed, obviously. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to keep the vast majority out. So there's the first rough coat all the way around the shop. Dirt will be piled up basically to the top of that uh, paint line. So you really won't see much of that. At least I don't think you will. Hopefully that'll help. We'll seal some of the water out anyway. So I'm trying to put this stuff on pretty heavy. It goes quite a quite a ways, a five gallon bucket of this stuff does. And I'm only doing the outside of the building. I don't think I'm gonna do the inside. I don't see there's 
probably no benefit to that and there may not be any benefit to doing this but I don't think it's a bad idea the uh, second coat goes on a lot easier than the first coat these blocks they just takes you know they got so many holes in them it's just hard to get them all full but this stuff's really thick and it goes on relatively well Yeah, this stuff needs to be mixed pretty well. It separates, you can see. Well, you probably can't see it, but it does. Take my word for it. So it even says, obviously I read the instructions before I started this, that you need to mix it uh, prior to use and during use and not get it all over your face like I'm doing. I have an actual paint stirring attachment that hooks to the drill, but who knows where that thing's at. So I just bent a piece of rebar. So there we go, two good heavy coats, actually three coats on the bottom seam where the block meets the foundation, where water would pool if it was to. And that's as good an angle as I could get you from this. If I moved the camera over 10 feet, you would drop down 20. So just, we'll take this angle. Looks pretty good, I think. It ain't gonna matter, it's gonna be below ground. You get the idea, I think it'll work. So this wall's gotten so high that I basically have to climb up on it to lay these blocks and it's slowed my progress down to a point to where, you know, just uh, it's just not feasible to continue on like this. Now, you could you can't even set scaffolding up uh, with the current uh, uh, layout of the ground because there's a huge trench on the inside of the shop and the ground's crazy unlevel on the outside. So I need to get that fill material in here that way I can get some scaffolding up and move forward on this block work. So I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, why just bring the fill in? Why not bring the fill and pour the pad? You know, work off, put your scaffolding on the actual concrete floor that's going to be in your shop. And the truth is, I just can't. The way that I tore this shop down, built the support wall down the center, you know, it's actually, the support wall is actually sitting on a broken piece of the pad that'll have to be removed. So until that support wall can come down, I can't put the pad in and I can't remove that support wall until I get these walls built to support the roof. Had I been a little more forward thinking, you know, in the beginning stage of this of this project, you know, that's what it would I what I would have done, but it's hard to think of every scenario that you could possibly run into. And I'm just gonna roll on with what I got. So I wanna take a couple minutes. Fast forward through this if you're not interested in the backstory and the reasoning why I'm doing things the way that I am here uh, on this building. I've got a lot of new viewers who are interested and I'm getting a lot of questions on you know, why I'm doing things the way that I am here. What's the backstory, really? So I want to try to briefly give that. Now this building was falling down. It was a block building built on a slab, just a concrete pad that was poured and then a block building built on top of it, close to a hillside. So recipe for disaster, no gutters washing out, erosion, the building lost support and broke and fell. This floor was tilted about five degrees and this wall was fallen. So I wanted to try to repair this building so I can use it, hopefully for the rest of my life anyway. Uh, this is definitely not a forever building. It's just in a horrible spot. Yeah, I could have moved this wall over a few feet and that would have bought me some years, but it would also have been a smaller shop. I was already working in a, in a small shop considering what it, this building should be so I didn't want to do that so I built it in its original footprint I just went with a really heavy footer could I have drilled down and put piers down to bedrock it's possible but I would have to get a drilling machine in here because you're not doing it by hand under this roof this I'm building a building backwards actually and tried to drill things you know people are like well you could have just done this or you could have just done that but it's really not that simple access to this place is the is the hard part i'm not a builder so i'm kind of you know fumbling my way through this and yeah there could be some things that i've overlooked i'm sure that there are but a lot of times there's reasoning behind what the way that i've done it the way that i have 
I had a guy in my last video say, oh, you're not doing it the way that I would do it, therefore unsubscribed. And I'm thinking, wow, is that all it takes for me not to do it the way that you would do it, you know, and to, for you to unsubscribe? But, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, talking about the support wall here. I'm not for sure if the camera puts uh, uh, portrays a true image of what's here and how far hard it would be to get any equipment in here to build a support wall and how expensive that would be to have an actual concrete retaining wall built in here. Well, that would be more than the cost of a brand new building. And if I'm going to go that, that way, I'd just tear this thing down, move it out of the firing zone of the creek, and build a new building. So it's all a compromise, right? You, know, you just do the best you can with uh, the p situation that you're in and move forward. You know, it's easy to sit back and say, well, I would have done things like this. You know, just like, uh, you're not putting steel in that wall. Well, I'm putting steel in every run other than one or two that I forgot. I didn't put one in the bottom. And I think there's another run, like the second run up, I think, doesn't have a wire in it. I just didn't think to put it in. Maybe, maybe there's two runs, whatever. It's... More steel in this than what it needs. If you put steel in basically every run, this wire, it's going to be good enough, I guarantee you. And if this building gets in a position where this steel even comes in play, then you're in trouble already. If this footer starts giving away and it starts losing support, well, the steel's just going to buy you a little time, and that's it. It's not going to be the answer to saving this building. The only way that this building would survive is if it wasn't next to this water. So, you know, there's reasonings behind the re why I'm doing it the way that I am. I could, you know, bust out this top, put a put some rebar in there, but it wouldn't make any difference in, in reality. If that ever comes into play and it's necessary, like I said, the building's done anyway. And it was, uh, it was all upset because uh, I didn't grout this solid. Well, I didn't watch the video because I said, I just grout in every other cell halfway up the rebar in preparation for the back the pressure of the backfill material once that's done and i can get scaffolding and stuff in here and can actually walk i'll grout this bottom wall solid so i don't know you know it just it can be frustrating i had people say you know don't let people get you down with the thumbs down and the majority of those thumb, thumbs down come before the videos even had time to be watched so those are people that follow you just to dislike you for some reason every producer of videos gets them i see them everywhere and i don't I don't pay much attention to that. In fact, it's probably a good thing, actually, because any interaction is good. Uh, even if it's th thumbs down, it shows interaction, which YouTube likes. So, I mean, of course, I don't necessarily like it, but I, I don't get upset about it either. I've been at this game long enough to where that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. But that's the reasoning behind this building. I just don't want to invest more than it would cost for a new building into half of an old building, if that makes sense. I'm still, even when I'm done with this, no matter how how well I build this side of the building, this side's still going to be exactly the same as it was before. And I don't want to end up to where I can't put a roof on this thing and get it to where it's a good dry place to work. That's all. For the rest of my life, that's all I'm, that's all I'm interested in. Uh, I don't expect this building to last forever. And... You know, there's compromises that always have to be made, and it usually always revolves around finance and time. So that's the reasoning. You know, there's no support wall there, big concrete support wall there, because you can't dig into it. Grab you a shovel and give it a shot. Um, uh, you know, and, and it just co would cost more than the building's worth. So it's just a dance around numbers and trying to get something that I'm satisfied with. But I think it's looking pretty good.
So here I'm working on the back corner of the shop. Now this is that a part that I'm cutting on is actually part of the concrete pad that's going to be staying. But it has to be supported somehow underneath. It just can't hang out in the breeze like you see it doing right now. I'm just cutting off the excess so I can put a patch on here or actually a cap on this hole so I can pour that flowable fill material, the backfill material, in the shop and it not run out of this hole and over the hillside because that's where it would, would go if I didn't plug this up. So that's what I'm doing. Measuring out, building up a patch. That way when the time comes and the fill material's set up, I can pour some concrete in here to support this part of the pad. So these lasers are extremely handy and I'm going to use this thing to set some reference marks on the inside of my building with a paint marker to the maximum level that I want this flowable fill material to come up to. I don't want it to be above where I want it because that will limit the thickness of my pad and I at least want seven inches of concrete in here. Seven inches of reinforced concrete is plenty. And uh, I would go eight but that would put me right at, well, slightly over a full truck. A truck holds ten yards. And I don't want to uh, I don't want to play the numbers that close when it comes to concrete. You want to always have enough. So seven inches is good. That's what I'm going to roll with. So let's go around, set some reference marks, and make sure that you know this is going to be able to pour up to that level. I'll probably have to do some work up here, but you know we'll see. Let's go around, set some marks, see where we're going to be at. So two foot four inches plus seven inches would be two foot eleven. Get our laser on 211. Come down here and mark on the wall. So that's the maximum height that I want this fill material to fill up to.
So I'm just tying up all the loose ends. My truck should be here within the hour or so with my fill material. You can see I got just a, a short dam here. I use the laser, it should be all it'll take in order to allow the material that gets poured in here to get up to the height that I want. And um, I'm just going around making sure I've got all the loose dirt and stuff out of the trench. I've got some rocks in there which won't hurt anything. And in fact, I'll probably throw some rocks in once uh, you know this stuff starts uh, flowing in to just help take up a bunch of space. I've got some concrete here. You know, that uh, won't hurt a thing. I just bring my level up uh, if I have issue uh, getting to the height that I need. You can see there's my marks. And uh, you can think of this flowable fill material as a foundation, actually, because that's what it is. It's going to be a foundation for my pad that will get my concrete pad that will get poured in here. So it's important that it, you know, is stable. Uh, I did the math on this. Um, it's an educated guess, actually, um, on what it will take in order to fill this. And me erring on the side of caution, on the large side, I got 7.82 yards of concrete or of flowable fill. A truck only holds eight yards. So hopefully, you know, this will be enough to get this to the level that I want. As you can imagine, uh, calculating how much volume you need, liquid volume to, you know, conform to this trench is not, uh, not an easy thing to do. It's impossible, really, without filling it with liquid and measuring the volume. So, educated guess it is, and I think that it'll be plenty. If it's extra, which I'm hoping that I have some extra, it will go around the outside of the shop, and I'm somewhat prepared for that as well. So, I'll bring you back when the truck gets here. I'm just going to make sure that everything's right before it uh, shows up. If we can get it back in here a little, it'd be okay. nice. I probably can do it there, that way it'll flow easier. If, if it'll flow like this, I don't have to work with this material. If we can pull it around. Yeah. Okay. You, got, you got wheelbarrow here? Is that what you want to do with the wheelbarrow? Or I should. Come here and look. Shoot it up in there. If, if it can get in here, hopefully it'll run around through there. We'll hoe it. Yeah. You know, that's, All right. that's, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. I try to that's probably have to get it there. Yeah, that's 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 what I'll try. I
way over there eating. Yeah, I mean, this building's been such a pain to try to repair. <laughs> it's like fixing an old broke car. Yeah.
go right to you. Oh, you only got some dust in your little nose. Getting big. All right, guys, that's it this week. I still got a ton of work to do to get this graded out. I've got a lot of, I mean, the ground here is just crazy. I don't think they actually graded it at all. Between six and nine inches of concrete, depending on where you measure. Uh, some places, maybe five inches. Um, so who, who knows? So bring in the scaffolding. That's what I'm going to do. Finish my walls, get the load off of this roof so I can remove this support wall remove what concrete that this support wall is sitting on, and then grade this out, bring in a little fill if I have to, remove a little dirt if I have to, to get this all to the level that I want it. It should be time for the pad then, and I'm glad that I'm ready. So, I think that's it. I'd suggest this stuff to anybody who's considering filling in, you know, below a pad, maybe filling in a hole or around a foundation. It really worked well. It didn't move quite as easy as I thought it would. Um, I was a little surprised, uh, but you know, it worked out. We got it where it needed to go, and it wasn't that bad. So that's it. It was easier to move than concrete, that's for sure, than the concrete with number 57's in it. Man, that stuff will kill you. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. Much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.